Hello everyone, my name is Loco. Welcome back to another high-level match of StarCraft 2. Now what I've got for you today is a best of three series of Terran vs Protoss from the GSO Codes, where in game number one we find ourselves on the map Gresven. Now spawning here in the top left-hand corner and going for a very quick double refinery, we're looking inside of the main base of Gumiho. His opponent in the opposite corner with the red Protoss pieces, one of the strongest... Okay, one of the strongest Protoss players. Nice, I'm a professional. One of the strongest players from Korea. We're looking at none other than Creator's main Nexus. Sometimes I accidentally touch the sides of my monitor, okay? Well, you know, my mouse cursor. Not actually physically in person. I'm not actually using a touchscreen. That would be insane, playing StarCraft 2 with a touchscreen? Would it actually be playable? Mm, I mean, it would be playable. Yeah, sure. Do you know there's actually a StarCraft 64, which is a original StarCraft Brood War that was meant for the Nintendo 64, which um, works about as well as you'd imagine. <laughs> I've seen some people play it. I've never given it a try myself. I actually kind of want to give it a try at some point, uh, but getting, getting a Nintendo 64 ready to stream is a little bit tricky, and I haven't really... Oh, he's actually gone double refinery, and now he's pulling the probes out of... or the SCVs, rather, out of gas. Interesting. Okay. So, really quick factory here, and now we're trickling them back into the refinery, alright. Anyways, I've never bothered with setting it up, but maybe one day I'll go ahead and do so. I actually don't have a Nintendo 64. I wonder what those are going for these days. They're probably going for quite a bit. I'd have to look up eBay or something along those lines. Anyhow, Twilight Council opener right here from Creator, which of course is no surprise to anybody. This is the most popular build right now in this matchup. Eh, this together with the Stargate opener. It sort of depends how many gateways Creator wants to make. A lot of Protoss players are fans of making three gateways. Some Protoss players are making, uh, well, four gateways in total, which is usually a whole lot more aggressive. With four gateways, you're really trying to get into the opponent's base and, well, deal as much damage as possible. It's gonna be that blink upgrade first. We'll have to see exactly what style Creator is currently favoring. So this is from the GSO Codes, which is, well, the most prestigious tournament over in South Korea. So both of these players are certainly going to be prepared for this particular match. The one advantage of the GSO Codes, opposed to a lot of the other casts that I do right here on the channel, is that these players, they will know who they're going to be facing off against at least a few days in advance, and oftentimes a few weeks in advance as well. So they have a lot of time to study the opponent and to figure out exactly what their tendencies are, and usually that creates some more spicy games. Although so far, I mean, other than a really quick double refinery here, nothing all too crazy is done by either two players. And even that is relatively tame, of course. All right, so we're gonna block off this little retreat path, and I guess, well, access into the natural expansion. The Reapers can sometimes try and jump in from that angle. There is a Widow meme over here. Yeah, and that one is gonna get some damage done. All right, he's gonna try and see if he can potentially get the kill on it, which would be awesome, but there's already a medevac coming across the map. I wouldn't mind seeing that one. Okay, maybe trying to snatch this, uh, this Widow Mine before it actually dies. Apparently not the case because there's already Reapers being a nuisance here too. Mostly just trying to distract the Stalkers. Is that going to be a success? Well, the Stalkers are going back into the main base. And I believe that this Widow Mine drop, I mean, it should get shut down pretty hard. <sighs> Ooh, almost an absolute disaster right there for our Terran player. Ends up being okay. Good blink right there, though. Really beautiful blinks. Eventually? Okay, no. There you go. Actually, beautiful defense right there. He didn't lose a single Stalker. Good luck giving that a try in your own games. <laughs> I know there's at least one Protoss player that's like, You can do that? Yes, if you blink at the perfect moment, you can also do it with Adept Shades and everything. You just have to be really, really good at the game. I don't want to call you out or anything, uh, but I'm just saying, okay? I've seen this go wrong more times than I've seen it go right. And obviously, if you're playing with a little bit of ping, it does become a little bit more difficult. But of course, these games, they are played in a studio with both players. Well, I'm assuming actually they're playing on the Korean server, but there is a chance to have some sort of private server set up too, where the ping, at the very least, is minimal. All right. So this was, by the way, that, uh, that triple gateway start here, which is a lot more defensive than the quadruple gate. And so far, Creator is looking on point. Yeah, you almost ended up getting that medevac right there for free, right? That would have kind of sucked. Well, I mean, for the Terran. It wouldn't have sucked for Creator. The only thing, I guess, going wrong right there for Creator was losing one of the Adepts to a randomly positioned Widow Mine. But believe it or not, the pro gamers only have a single monitor that they can keep track of. And it turns out when, uh, yeah, you cannot look at everything at once. Sometimes a randomly positioned Widow Mine in the middle of nowhere can accidentally get one of your units. We'll forgive him for that one. 
Alrighty, so. Relatively passive game though here. Neither player really committing to a lot of aggression. Obviously the Widowmind drops, they have a tendency to end the game, especially at the lower levels, but... At this level of play, we can certainly assume that the players are not gonna be losing all too many workers. Now this is sort of interesting though. Creator rushing out the Templar Archives and going straight into the Psionic Storm upgrade. I feel like that has really lost popularity over the last half year or so with the prevalence of ghosts. I mean, obviously, there's no ghosts out yet, right? And normally we don't really see them until like three base Terran economy. But ghosts are certainly coming if the game goes on for long enough, okay? Terrans are very fond of the ghosts right now and EMPs, I mean, they're just fantastic. Not just against the High Templar, but also against the Archons, right? And those two units go hand in hand. Basically, the Ghost is good against everything that Protoss <laughs> wants to make because of this shield mechanic. So, yeah, you can expect that they will be out very soon. At the very least, you know, as far as the game duration goes, we should be seeing them at some point here. Unless uh, Gumiho somehow takes massive storms to the face and loses everything. For now, though, he's going for a really big attack. So we've got the standard timing here coming up for our, pro for our Terran player here. Uh, so he's gone into Stimpak Combat Shields, plus one infantry weapons. This is a timing we've seen many, many times before. Although the combination of units here is pretty interesting. Gumiho has got himself two Ravens up in the air. So the timing is maybe not that strange. Loses another Stalker right there. The timing here may not be that strange, but the unit composition definitely is curious. We've got three Siege Tanks as well. There's a lot of good positions. Okay, he does now see a Prism. That Prism was looking menacing, and that's because Storm indeed is done. If you have the High Templar inside of the Prism, you can maneuver them around a lot more aggressively, but of course you can also lose the Prism and lose everything inside of it for free. Okay, there's a couple of really good interference matrixes. Shutting down a few of these Protoss units, but so far, yeah, the tanks haven't really found a good spot. Nice control right here as well, though, by Creator. Yeah, lovely work. I mean, Prism is gonna be back in action right now. Another good follow-up storm. Charge at this point is done. Nice hold right there by Creator. Third command center at this point is done for Gumi, who's going to be flying it down towards the low ground. But of course, the third Nexus has been up and running for quite a while, and I think we can expect maybe a fourth Nexus here as well momentarily. Creator could also decide to just get very aggressive, and I mean, we still of course don't... I mean, if you're going to go for an Archon, you kind of have to go for some sort of aggression, especially when, you know, Ghosts are on the horizon. Uh, we could certainly get, yeah, a little bit more feisty here. That seems to be what Gumiho is also assuming. Double gas taken here immediately at the third command center, by the way. Alright, Robo Bay on the back of this, and I do believe we're gonna be seeing that Nexus here on the right side of the map. Okay, so just poking and prodding here with these units. Trying to get whatever he can. Storm? Ooh, he would have had a storm, but Gumiho decided to run back just barely in the nick of time. There's that uh, dreaded Ghost Academy on the production tab. Yeah. Archons and High Templar get shut down pretty hard, so I wonder if he wants to continue the aggression. Nice interference matrix once again on the Prism, though. That is a curious use, right? Maybe Gumiho originally made them to deal with, for example, Colossi? That seems to be where we see, well, interference matrixes most often in this particular matchup, but if you have them, you may as well use them, right? And I guess anti-armor missile, especially if it becomes like a big clump of, well, grouped up Stalkers and Zealots, there's a lot of potential there, too. Anyways, Colossi are indeed coming up here eventually. Extended Thermal Lens, Double Robo. I'd love to see all of this. Zealot's coming in from the north. Terran ready for another attack, but he's actually a little bit late on these upgrades. So only just now is when Plus 2 has been fired up for the infantry weapons. That does mean that, well, at the very least, a Terran is not going to be able to go for, like, a really powerful attack lined up with those upgrades. Speaking of upgrades, though, Creator at this point has not really bothered with any of them. So I wouldn't mind seeing a few forges going down here momentarily, but apparently he's just going for mass SCV harassment just with a bunch of zealots. Zealots now coming in as well from the right side of the map, getting nine workers here in total. It's not bad at all. All right, so there's a, a forge indeed researching. We've got a second forge in the main base right now too. High Templar in the main base, ready to feed back any metavex that might be getting a little bit ambitious. And Creator is playing a stellar game so far. At the very least, I've seen many games. That was a lovely blink there, too. I've seen a lot of games where Terran just absolutely overwhelms Protoss at this stage in the game, or, well, with any of the attacks before it. Alrighty, Zealot's coming in once again. I feel like Protoss players have gotten a lot better at Zealot runbys over the last half year or so. 
Like, it used to be, I'm fairly sure the way that Protoss players used to do Zealot run by is they just warp in, like, you know, six Zealots over here and then shift Q, attack move it towards the other side of the map, and then they never look at the units ever again. But recently I've noticed, and this sounds very obvious, that a lot of Protoss players are actually sending in their Zealots, and then they're also actually disengaging with the Zealots. I know, crazy concept, but they certainly have been getting a lot more value off, it seems, over the last... Well, a little while. Stalkers over here actually find the fourth command center. They have to be a little careful, though, these stalkers. I wouldn't mind seeing, yeah, I was going to say a recall, because there's a very good chance that these units will get cornered here in the end. Okay, plus one, plus one starts up here for Creator. Plus two is just about to finish, though, here for Gumi, although he's not going for the plus two infantry armor just yet. Creator doesn't really care, though. Units like, for example, the High Templar don't really benefit from any of those upgrades anyway, sir. So not to a meaningful amount. And obviously their damage output is pretty high anyways. Dark Templar coming up. Okay. Lovely work. Good work here as well by Mr. Gumi, who now has a fourth command center landed, and apparently that's his cue to go for a fusion core. Fusion core with plus one air weapons. Okay. Interesting. Should be for the Liberator ranged, but we've been seeing quite a bit of uh, Battlecruiser play lately in this matchup too. I mean, especially from a man like Gumiho, whenever I see a fusion core and I see plus one, I'm like, okay, this has got to be, uh, yeah, but it's probably for Liberators with range. Liberator range is amazing against all of these Protoss units. Stalkers can sort of deal with Liberators, but they're a tricky unit to really rely on, because if the Liberator numbers grow, oftentimes Stalkers just don't cut it. And Creator is pretty aggressive with his Stalker control, but he's no, you know, he's no max packs. He's no hero when it comes to that unit movement. So, I actually don't mind this, going into a Stargate already, ready to go for that Sky Toss transition if he needs it. Alright. Pretty passive game though here, right? Like, nothing all too crazy. One Ghost here leading the charge. Zealots coming in from the north here once again. They're gonna settle for a Sensor Tower. Pretty annoying, actually. Sensor Towers are expensive and very critical. We should really have some units here, but it looks like our Protoss player should have enough to deal with this, assuming he micros. At the same time, there's also another attack here on the right side of the map, but Creator has successfully split up his army. The Zealots over here kill a few more SCVs, and they may very well get a... a look right over here at that planetary fortress. I hope for their sake they're not going to be running themselves into it. Or into this Terran army, for what it's worth. Are they going to at the very least valiantly charge? No. They're going to be cowards as they run away. Fair enough, dude. I can't blame him. I mean, I would probably run away too if I was about to die. I I'll be honest with you, okay? You can judge them for not charging at the enemy, but yeah, I don't really mind it. It's, by the way, for that Liberator, right? So that Liberator transition. Do we already have advanced ballistics? We do not. Gumiho probably wants to fire. There we go. Fire up that upgrade. One Dark Templar here being a nuisance, but that Raven from the early game still putting in a whole lot of work. All right. Protoss continuously needs to split up their army here, and it's not easily done. Look at that Archon. It's a funny looking one, isn't it? He's got the uh, anti-armor on him. Not something we see very often. Okay, now this I do really like here from Gumiho. He's noticed that his opponent has got a part of his army right over there. Boosting into the main base. All of our protos here could be a disaster. Tactical nuke, by the way, coming up. We've got a bunch of carriers already on the production tab here as well. Some static defense over here on the... Well, left side of the main base, and a couple of Vikings here, trying to just deal damage wherever they can. Liberator over here being annoying, but that one will get shut down. Drop is still imminent in the main base, it looks like. No, actually, it already passed by it. I was gonna say, I, I should be seeing that one move forward right about right now. High Templar, though, trying to get some damage done. Dark Shrine does get sniped, and there's a tactical nuke flying towards this... Well, I guess the middle base, this was, I think, the fifth Nexus right here of our Protoss player. He's already found the red dot, though, and he decided to run the probes, at least the majority of them. Sorry about that guy. But he's gonna be able to get it back. This used to work really well, actually. Protoss players not really expecting to nuke to come on that base, right? Because it's one of those locations where you don't really suspect it's gonna be that amazing. But oftentimes it deals damage if you are, well, not prepared for it. But I think these days it's so common that, uh, yeah, it doesn't usually work particularly well. Alrighty. Gumiho going into the plus two, plus two here as, as well. So that's the plus two right here for the air weapons. Additional starports are coming up. There's Liberators hiding in the main base. We'll I have to see what sort of add-ons go down right here on these starports. 
Liberator harassment here continuing on the right side of the map. And this is where things get very annoying, right, for the Protals. Because with Liberator range, the Stalkers oftentimes can't actually reach it. Yeah, so these Stalkers here are out of range of that Liberator. Now, the Liberator is also out of range of the Midnoral line, but technically with some good micro, Terran can be very annoying. Medivex are still hiding over there. We do have a few carriers out at this point, and they're going to be... Okay, well, apparently we had another tactical nuke flying across the map. Uh, they're going to be used right now to get rid of some of these units. There is a nuke landing here very soon. That one will certainly finish the Nexus off. This is going to be painful. <sighs> All right, 10 probes end up going down. A little bit of a push here on the left side of the map, too. Medivex could certainly go back into the main base. And this is starting to look a little bit too oppressive right now from Gumiho, right? Who's happily just expanding all over the map. We are building tech labs! We are building tech labs right here on these starports. Okay. So this is a man ready to go for that Dutter Cruiser transition. There's already, though, a lot of Stargates producing carriers as well. Yamato gun, there it is. Getting the weapon refit, ready to go. Dropping the main base, indeed, goes back in. Getting any of these forges would be massive. That is the plus three. Yeah, certainly the best you can hope for. Getting both of them would be insane. And he gets them. Dark Templar number two? Nah, that might be a little bit overly ambitious. Okay. Eventually, this is going to get sniped, but this is going to slow down our Protoss player quite a bit, who honestly seems already like he's been slowed down for the last five minutes. Maybe a little bit concerned about playing this late-game army. He still has a lot of mid-game units that can be amazing, but... He really needs to get some sort of damage with them done. I wouldn't mind seeing an attack with this army up north. Anywhere where it can be helpful. I mean, if the Liberators aren't with the army... Or, sorry, they're not set up right here to defend the base. I've got a feeling that that can definitely work out nicely for him. Carrier here trying to get some work done. Yeah, and they're going to be able to snipe those Liberators that are just harassing it. So, triple battlecruiser coming right up right here. Who called in the fleet? Turns out it's Gumiho. And with Yamato cannons, I mean, they can deal a tremendous amount of damage to all of these, well, valuable targets. Another group of Metavex just YOLOing towards the other side of the map. Okay, Immortal's now getting some work done as well. This is both players essentially just trying to clear out some of their, their supply count to replace them with higher tier units instead. And sadly for these two units, they don't really get that much done. Okay, we have some of the Dark Templar here being a nuisance, fair enough. Five additional barracks also, by the way, coming up right now for the Terran. Yeah, building all of those here on the left side of the map in case of like a strange base race or something along those lines. Stalkers are going to try and see if they can potentially finish up this command center. They could certainly try and blink past it. Yeah, but I think they're actually going to get sacrificed. None of this is particularly ideal for Creator, man. I really liked where he was at in the earlier stages of the game. I really liked the mid-game, but... The late game just seems a little bit shaky. Look at the amount of money right now in the bank as well for Gumi. Already getting the plus three air weapons done at the 19 minute mark as well is not bad at all. Additional starports coming up. I mean, he's been maxed out for a while. He's had some money in the bank for a while too. But now is when he's really starting to double down on that. Uh, he just teleported them over here, by the way. Yeah, so just hiding in the top right hand corner. You'll love to see that too. I wouldn't mind seeing him wait for a little bit longer. Because there's a whole load of carriers here. Anyways, um, yeah, I think you should wait until you have your technical jump off cooldown again. Anyways, he's got a whole lot more infrastructure built right now. So if he loses this army, he's going to be very easily able to remake it as well. I mean, it's still going to take a few minutes. But not nearly as bad as if you were doing it off of five or maybe eight barracks, right? We're going up to 12 here. We've got eight starports. You don't regularly see eight starports. 15 gateways as well right away here for Protoss, but only three and two right here for the higher tech structures. Okay. Two more Stargates coming right up. I think we're getting to the point though. Nice snipe over there. I think we're getting to the point where this Terran army is becoming maybe a little bit too good. There's certainly a moment as well where you're thinking about going for like a mothership, but so far Creator hasn't made that decision. I think the Mama ship is not a bad call, but I guess when... Does he realize how many battle cruisers there are? There's another tactical nuke flying across the map. That one's going to be hitting the base up north, but he's going to be bowled to death. These BCs, by the way, do have their tactical jump available right now, so they are going to commit. I keep putting my camera right here on these four Metavex at the 6 o'clock position, too. 
I do believe that they're gonna fly in at some point, but... Anyways, the carriers are parked right next to this, and I don't believe that this is really going to work out that well, but... Eh, maybe a few Yamatos and then back home? I mean... Or we can just die. Yeah, that's always an option. Okay. There we go. Alright. Battlecruisers do return back home without one of their friends, which is fair enough. So, Gumiho is creating a proper split map scenario, right? So he's basically taking all of the left side of the map. If you can take any of the bases that are normally considered to be one of the Protosses, that is basically it. I don't think Creator quite realized that the Battlecruiser transition was well underway. So only just now is when he really fired up a bunch of those uh, Tempests as well. The Tempests are gonna be really neat. Here's that drop in the main base, finally showing up. Tactical Nuke coming into the main base of our Protoss player as well. And getting any of these upgrades sniped is absolutely amazing. Yeah, both of the Cyber Cores, there you go. That's both of the air upgrades tonight. And honestly, like, that is, that is detrimental. That is super painful in a lot of these fights that are gonna be coming up in even just the next few minutes from now. Eventually, Protoss is gonna be able to finish up all the upgrades if the game goes on for long enough, but... So we're just going into mass, mass Sky Terran. Very interesting, right? How, like, the meta has shifted. We never used to see Sky Terran as part of, like, well any StarCraft game. At least not at this level of play. It was also it was always about Sky Toss. Sky Toss was considered to be the ultimate unit composition, and obviously we had some Sky Zerk as well, but Sky Zerk has never been particularly popular. Mostly because of the strength of the Zerk spellcasters, I suppose. They Yeah, they're pretty good. Anyways, six battle cruisers on the production tab in the GSO code S. I I don't even remember the last time that, that has ever happened. Alright, here comes Creator though. So he's lacking his upgrades, right? Like, he's only at plus one, plus one right now for all of those interceptors. So every single carrier carries eight interceptors, and every single one of them should have been more powerful. That's huge. Especially against the plus three, well, soon to be plus three, plus three, I guess, for these battle cruisers. Both players taking a tremendous amount of damage, because neither of them really wants to commit to fighting the main army of the opponent. So we have carriers on the left side, battlecruisers going into the third, fourth main base, like wherever they can go. They're taking out probe after probe. In the meantime though, we've got our Protoss player taking out, look at these brave marines. Wow, they actually took down a carrier, that's insane. Those guys, man, they're not like those zealots from earlier, they definitely did not run away. Keep in mind though that Protoss has a way to recall all of his army, and at the same time these, uh, well, battlecruisers can always go ahead and teleport away too. There's gonna be a moment where I think both players decide, okay, enough is enough. Who comes out ahead here? Okay, apparently that moment where our Terran player decides to leave the bases behind, yeah, that moment was just now. Few more BCs available, there's another tactical, or oh, not a tactical jump, a tactical nuke. Everything's tactical with Terran, man. Alright, Ghost trying to be annoying. I'm assuming those other two battle cruisers that were still over here. They ended up uh, flying all the way back home. Bunch of pylons. Nothing all too crazy, but hey. May as well just uh, lay down the hurt somewhere. Okay, so, big picture here. Who ended up getting an advantage there? I would say it's our Terran player. But he had a massive bank not too long ago. And that bank has been mostly diminished. Creator still has some money in the bank. He's only at 157 supply right now in total, though. He really needs to remake some of those pylons. I really like the missile turrets here. The missile turrets are going to be able to kill at least a few of the interceptors. Yeah, yeah, six or so ended up going down so far. Maybe a couple more. Here come the battle cruisers, though. Tactical jump once again available. They're going to be able to go for your motor guns right away, too. There we go. Just snipe whatever you can get. It is very hard to tell what's actually happening in this battle, but I believe that what we are witnessing here is a Protoss player getting demolished. Oh, the irony. For years and years and years, Zerk players, right? So I'm going to be biased here for a moment because I mostly play Zerk myself. For years and years and years, what I have heard is, Loco, if you can't beat Skytos, why don't you just kill them before they get there? 
And it seems to me that maybe for Protoss in the late game against Terran, a very similar rule may very well apply. Because the last few times I've seen that late game in Terran versus Protoss, we had that amazing game between Classic and TY on Neo Humanity, right? Remember that one? Where TY just turtled up like crazy and then ended up, well, with a very similar army composition. It just looks to me like that late game Terran army absolutely wipes the floor with the Protoss. And there weren't really any anti-armor missiles in the mix. I don't even know if I saw any EMPs right there in that last fight, although in my defense that fight was difficult to read. <sighs> the strength of that Terran late game army is pretty phenomenal, right? I'm also not convinced though that we've really seen Protoss players squeeze that much juice out of their late game either, right? Like, for example, we didn't have any Mama ships in that previous game at all. I know the Mothership is a relatively easy unit to snipe, I am well aware of the minus 400, minus 400 memes and all the rest of it, but I've got a feeling there is some more value that can be gained, right? So, what are the reasons why Zerk, for example, right? So that is the matchup I'm very familiar with. Say you're playing... Okay. Zerk versus Protoss, and you're playing against that late game army. One of the reasons why your Corruptors can't just fly into all of those Protoss capital ships is because of the Archon. Now, there weren't any Archons in that previous fight, and that ultimately allowed all of those battle cruisers to just jump on top of all of those Skytos units. I'm not exactly sure how the dynamic works out, but it really seems to me that there's still some improvements that can be made to that late game Protoss army too. And I fully understand, by the way, like that was completely tongue in cheek, of course, saying like, hey, maybe you should beat them before they get there. Um, I fully understand that beating a Terran player when they are turtled up like that is incredibly hard. Because again, that is what Terran players are doing against Zerk right now too. A lot of it though has to do with the StarCraft 2 map pool currently, where a lot of these maps, um, they're considered to be Terran maps. Even the Terran players are saying that like five out of the seven maps we see in StarCraft 2 right now are Terran maps. And if that's the case, in a best of, well, a best of three series like this particular one, both players get to veto two maps each. In a best of three series like this one, you'll basically always be playing all three games on a Terran map. Which is interesting. Just throwing it out there. Anyways, we'll see where we go right here on Dragon Skills as we've got ourselves a Cyclone opener. Sentry also available already for Creator, who's now going to be scouting his opponent's main base here with an hallucinated Phoenix. Double tech lap over here. Man might be getting uh, flashbacks, but I'm assuming this is going to be for either a Raven or, well, for a Banshee or two. This is actually super annoying, though, with this wall off over here on top of the high ground. These structures here for Creator are exposed. Medivac here is providing high ground vision. Uh, I think there should be enough available. It's gonna, by the way, be... It's, <laughs> it's gonna, by the way... It's gonna, by the way, be uh, the Cloak Benchy opener right here for Gumiho. There's, of course, no Blink available yet for these Stalkers. The Blink upgrade is coming up once again, but... Ah, that's two Stalkers down the drain. Gumiho looking incredibly strong here, man. Alright. Well, he can't afford losing these structures. He also can't really afford losing any more units, though. One of the gateways is certainly gonna go down. Losing the cyber core would really suck because then he can't actually produce any more stalkers. Okay. Sentry ends up falling. Wonderful start right here for the Gumi God. He used to be known as a mech player, man, and maybe ah, the previous game was a little bit of mech, right? He, he mech that happened, that's for sure. But. He didn't really play that style, right? He usually opens up with bio these days, and then maybe when he can get there, it'll be a mech transition. It wasn't really like that game that TY played against Classic, where TY literally just went into straight siege tank production and then straight to Sky Terran. That was a entirely different strategy. I wonder if we're gonna be if we're gonna go to a game number three, if it is gonna be Neo Humanity. I wonder if that is something that Gumi would be playing as well. Anyways. Creator would first off have to win this game, and so far, I mean, things are looking a bit better now than a minute or two ago. Yeah, with Blink finishing up, you can keep those Stalkers alive so much easier, and I think, actually, that uh, Gumiho overstayed his welcome a bit. That fight started off pretty great right there for the Terran, but then he decided to just stick around there. Now, here's the Benshi, being very annoying. It doesn't have any kills yet. Observer not yet available either, by the way, so he could certainly get some damage done. Second Benshi currently flying across the map, too. Can we start targeting some actual probes? Hello. 
Gumi? Okay. I mean, yeah, this is not the most successful harassment I've ever seen in my life. At the same time, the stalkers decided to go across the map, just being a nuisance over here. How many gateways do we have? Yeah, so this is four gateways. A four gateway stalker, like I said, played a lot more aggressively. Now there's no more energy available right here in this one benchy, and well, that means that she will end up getting sniped. And even though, yeah, the shield batteries here are running low on energy, as long as they're around, man, they're gonna be just all right. You really, so if you have two stalk, or if, sorry, if you have two benchies together, and you have them fire at the same time, you can actually kill the probes before the shield battery's healing kicks in. So, uh, yeah, splitting them up like that, I mean, it can work if the opponent doesn't have shield batteries, but evidently, Creator already made them, so if you know that he's got them, why not just try and group them up together for maybe a little bit of harassment later on? That felt a little bit silly right there. Anyways. Charge coming up on the back of this, and we're actually just gonna go into more gateways. So, eight gateways here in total, all ready for our Protoss player. And I believe that that means he wants to get a bit aggressive. Now, it's always difficult, though. Pushing into a sieged up Terran base like this, how in the world do you get it done? Your best chance is to catch them when they are moving out, or when they're trying to take a third base. Those are your two options, okay? You can't really just... Well, you can try, but you can't really blink into the main base anymore at this stage in the game and get a lot of damage in, unless Terran makes some pretty significant errors. So here come the Benchies once again. He made a third one? Oh, that's funny. Okay, he did actually make a third Benchie here, just to try and do what I was suggesting earlier. It's not really something that our Protoss player would be expecting at this point, I can tell you that much. Yeah, so at this point what Creator is doing is waiting for the army to move out. Okay, getting a Siege Tank here. Perfect amount of Stalkers to get exactly that done. Zealot Warping here as well on the right side of the map. And this is together with the Terran taking their third base. Here's those, uh, yeah, Cloaked Benchies though. Getting a little bit of damage in. Not bad at all. Okay. I thought they were going to be sent across the map to deal some damage to the uh, economy. But not quite the case. Zealot run by over here. Could be an absolute disaster for the Terran player to deal with. Okay, he actually decides to just drive his units back home. But that does mean that he's going to be taking quite a bit of damage here. These are still unupgraded Zealots other than charge. But nine SCVs have already gone down. Stalker's moving on over towards the third command center now too. And they're just trying to get whatever they can. Okay, another siege tank might be in some trouble here. No, not quite the case. But we could certainly collapse on top of his army. I think you might just be able to all army hotkey and A-move here, uh, creator. This looks like a sandwich and a half here. Okay, yeah, maybe there was a moment where that was possible, but I actually think charging to the natural expansion, not a bad call here either. Not all of those zealots have used up their charge ability, though. Okay, we're gonna pick up the siege tanks and we're gonna bring them to the main base, but this is going from bad to worse right now for Gumi. Losing so much economy, and there's a whole lot more on the back of this too. It's not over yet, though. Gumi go as... or Gumi go? <laughs> the Gumi got does have a nice clump of units right here in the natural expansion, but now the Zealots are charging at it. Siege Tank is gonna get targeted down easy peasy. More and more SCVs are falling here on the left side as well. Benchies here will be taken care of eventually. Creator with another big warp in. He's got loads of gas in the bank. Not exactly sure what all that gas is gonna be for. Never made a fourth Nexus either. Maybe he was planning on actually just dealing some damage over here and not winning the game, but... Sometimes if the opponent gives you uh, an opportunity, yeah, when they give you an opportunity to win, you gotta just try and take it. Are we gonna blink into the main base too? Nah, that would be a little bit overly ambitious. Okay. So Templar Archive fires up. This is of course always nice if your opponent doesn't have Ghost yet, and we have a lot of gas in the bank making a few Archons. I mean, two Archons here with this army would be absolutely amazing. Okay, so now what? Yeah, since the third command center was destroyed, Terra needs to make a decision, right? So I actually don't mind it if Creator just decides to go back home here. He's gonna try and see if he can get these siege tanks. It's not gonna happen, but there's an attempt. I actually wouldn't mind it if he just decides to go home. He might be thinking about blinking into your opponent's main base, okay. See, the thing is, you've sort of forced your opponent into an all-in right now. Either they're gonna make a new third command center, that would take forever, or they're gonna be marching across the map with everything that they've got. And judging right here, well, we know this is Gumiho. Judging by what he's doing, that is exactly what he's gonna go for. He's gonna go for one big push. Is he gonna pull the boys? I wouldn't mind seeing it, to be honest, because this is not really an army. Yeah, there we go. This is not really an army that you can easily transition away off. 
or away from. It's gonna actually get quite a few of the SCVs. Not bad at all. Okay, now the question is, does Creator have enough to defend at home? Basically, all the SCVs have been pulled. There's no storm available. As a matter of fact, there's no splash damage here for our Protals at all. And this is still a very scary attack right now from our Terran, especially with a lot of that Protals army in the middle of the map. Two Immortals here may very well get shut down right away. Siege tanks get picked up inside of the Metavex and are gonna drop right in between the structures right here of our Protals player. Loads of probes have gone down, but this just needs to be held. There's a lot more economy on the back of this for Creator, and as long as he cleans up all of these Terran units, he's gonna be okay. Now, this Terran army, though, is looking absolutely menacing. Those siege tanks are getting so much work done. I've got a feeling that that force field is helping out the Terran player more than it's helping out the Protoss. <sighs> Mules are pretty good, man. Are they 34 workers levels of good, though? Probably not, huh? Couple Terran units here do get, okay, sniped as they try to reinforce this. Gumiho, though, with just a straight push into the, uh... The opponent's natural. I love the fact that he put the siege tanks right there in a safe position. Okay. I still think that this is gonna be a pretty overwhelming advantage right here for Creator, though, but... Yeah, that's mostly just because all of the damage that Creator did earlier on. I don't think the defense over here has been as clean as he was hoping for. This is the fourth base right here of our Protoss player that is taking damage right now. But, of course, there's another Nexus on the left side here, too. So I don't really mind him just giving this one up. He's got vision right over here of his opponent's potential third command centers, and he knows that that is not going to be the case. It's not going to be something that will be taken, so... As long as he cleans up this army, all is still A-OK. -okay. The mules, though, still allowing him to produce quite a few of those marines. He wants to fight with the shield battery. Now, there's a lot of stalkers coming in from the back. I think they'll be able to kill all of those siege tanks pretty easily. And with the splash damage gone, I've got a feeling that this game indeed is over. Okay. Valiant effort right there by Gumi, and that certainly looked scary right there for just a moment. But in the end, Creator is going to be able to get a point on the board with some excellent Blink Stalker play. And that will take us to Babylon, so no Neo-Humanity, sadly, for the Terran fans out there anyways. Babylon it is. Okay, so we've got ourselves a low ground wall off right here for Creator. He just finished up his cyber core, so we'll see what sort of structure he wants to go for. If I were to make any guesses, it'll probably be a Twilight Council, although you know what, it could definitely also be a Stargate. I actually think it's gonna be a Stargate. Correction, Stargate. Boom, yeah, if you're not gonna go for the Warp Gate upgrade, you're probably saving some gas for something else. All right, it's gonna be that Stargate opener here pretty quickly from Creator, so not something we've seen yet in this particular series. Gumiho, though, a little bit concerned for it at the very least. He knows that there's a chance that it's building... Ooh, nice sniping over there. He knows that there's a chance that there's gonna be a Stargate building over here. You know what? Even though he did scout that location and didn't really find a whole lot, he's actually dealing right now... That Reaper should have maybe been here, right? He's actually dealing right now with quite a bit of harassment right over here. It's not our SCV kill. Lovely start right here from Creator, actually. With this, comments that are not finishing up... I mean, it's gonna finish here eventually. He just has to remove the scaffolding. There you go, that's the only thing that that SCV needed to do. Anyways, if the command center doesn't finish, you hit a massive supply block as Terran, and the game becomes a little bit awkward, because... Well, you sort of need that additional, well, command center, right? If you've decided to make it. Okay, good start though for Creator, all things considered. It's actually a Phoenix opener. Interesting. Yeah, so Babylon is a difficult map for Blink Opener, mostly because, well, if you want to blink into the Terran's main base, there's just not a whole lot of space here. So I don't really mind the Stargate Opener, but I'm curious to see what Gumiho is going to follow this up with. Okay, he's going to go for additional barracks. I think the Phoenix Opener in this case is much better. If it would have been a quick third command center, it could have been a little bit of a problem here for our Protoss, because... Well, if it's a quick third command center, Phoenixes are really good at keeping the opponent occupied and keeping them at home. But at the same time... Ooh, nice grenade. <laughs> at the same time, uh, yeah, if Terran goes for a triple CC opener, they actually aren't planning to go across the map anytime soon anyway, so your Phoenixes kind of lose their value. Usually with Phoenixes, you do transition towards a Robo facility and eventually a Robo Bay as well. It's going to be an important scout right here for Gumi, as he doesn't know what he's currently playing against, but he sees the Phoenix production. He will see the little paper plane right over there, and that'll make the game a bit easier for him to read. Okay. Third Nexus will be coming up as well momentarily. For now, yeah, 
Creator mostly just using those phoenixes here as uh, a way to defend his bases. It's kind of like the Blink Stalkers, right? If there would be a Widowmine drop coming in right now, that uh, that ship has sealed, so it's not going to come in anymore. But he's just keeping them at home just in case. Now, phoenixes are real good because you can take a bunch of uh, hits to the face with them, right? So they can soak up, for example, Widowmine hits and all that. You can deal damage on the other side of the map and then still fly them back home in time as well. To defend against or any sort of Terran attack. So, say for example, this would be a push with a Raven in the mix. Phoenixes can nullify that really quickly. Same for like, say for example, a Siege Tank push. You can lift up the Siege Tanks and take them out of the equation. So, it's a good way to keep the Terran player occupied, keep them at home, and then, yeah, force the game to go on for a little bit longer, assuming your micro is actually good enough. That's a big assumption, of course, but... Robo Bay here, coming up for Creator. So he's going to be able to start building those Colossi here momentarily. Now here's the classic trio of upgrades once again for Gumi. So, Stimpak, Combat Shields, plus one infantry weapons. That one's building right over here on the left side of the natural expansion. And we'll see when he decides to go for some aggression. So, it's triple Rex for the time being. If he wants to, he can definitely add on a couple more Rex here and deal some damage on the other side of the map. But becomes a pretty big commitment, and by the time the Terran... So this is the timing right here of the Robo Bay too, right? By the time the Terran's really ready to go for a push, right, when these three upgrades finish up, there should be a Colossus out on the other side of the map. Now I say that, we still have Phoenixes queued up. We have a Chrono right here on an Immortal. We really need to fire up. There you go. A Colossus on the back of this. That Colossus is actually very pivotal, because... If you don't start it up at the appropriate time, Terran's gonna move out, and uh, yeah, you don't actually have your lasers ready to go. That's the main downside of playing this sort of army, right? Like, yes, in theory, you can defend everything as Protoss, but in execution, if you make one little slip up and something is delayed, or you just, you know, messed up your macro, or you hit a supply block, or you lost one of your Phoenixes, life can become very, very dangerous. Certainly does feel like this is much easier to control from the Terran's point of view. Widowmine over there, lovely position. Okay, there is a Raven, by the way, in the mix. Getting the kill on that would be massive, because the Interference Matrix, of course, can shut down the Colossus. But at this point, apparently, Creator, yeah, he's feeling like he can actually defend this quite nicely. Decides to send out some of his units, and Third Command Center starts up here on the left side of the map. We should probably be extending our lands. <clears throat> Get it! We really need to be getting the Thermal Lens upgrade here soon. Phoenix, apparently, by the way, took a bit of a beating. But Widowmine got cleaned up. I, I, yeah, I think going for the extended thermal lens might be a good call. He's still adding on quite a few Phoenixes, though. We're actually at so many of them. Okay, here we go. This is the engagement that he was been looking for for a little while. Keep in mind, these Colossi have a very small amount of range, and most of the supply count right here in Army is caught up in all of those Phoenixes. Now, nice control right here by Creator, but he really has overextended just a tad and end up, you know, he ends up losing that Colossus. Super painful. Ugh. These fights, like, they feel so delicate, right? Maybe that's the best way to put it. I like the Phoenix opener, but even from the top-level Protosses, it just goes wrong as many times as it goes right. Now, this is actually now a really good counter, though. Yeah, getting so many of those units on the retreat. Zealot over here is gonna get sacrificed. But that is all good. Okay. Alright, alright. Yeah, you need some buffer. The Colossus alone. Like, imagine if there was another Colossus right now. This game would have actually been really handily handled, but handily handled? It would have been really well managed. Let's go with that. Uh, by Creator. Now, losing one of those, only just now starting up the extended thermal lens. Again, a whole lot of money in the bank because he's a bit late with those additional gateways. It's not ideal, but he does catch a few of the workers here at that base, and those Phoenixes are still around and kicking. How many did we lose? Five of them in total. Okay. Creator is actually ready to go for a big attack. Yeah. Good luck going for an attack, though, with short-ranged Colossi. I'm not sure if I like it all too much. Okay. Well, we're gonna go up to four Colossus here now. All available at the same time. This Colossus is rallied here in the middle of nowhere. Hope it's not accidentally gonna be caught with its pants down. I mean, they've got very long legs. It's a very long pants as well. Skinny jeans, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> judging. No, no, no. No, no. Bro, okay. Anyways, we're just gonna go for a counter-attack now instead. This is apparently the plan, and honestly, it feels like a very desperate plan. 
This is one hell of a Protoss army, but imagine it with two more Colossi, right? That would be really good. I think that'd be really, really nice. Okay, Protoss pushing into the natural expansion of our... Or sorry, Terran pushing into the natural... Well, I guess Protoss also pushing into the natural expansion of the, the Terran. Anyways, both players decide to take this base race. Keep in mind that Protoss can recall whenever they would like. There are some Ghosts already out, but they get sniped for free. And Ghosts are very small, but very expensive. Maybe not as expensive as a Colossus, but they don't quite mess around. Already, though, so much damage has been done on the other side of the map. Basically, all of the probes have disappeared. There's still a round of probes available over here, but not for much longer. With Stimpak being reactivated. Okay. Well, at least the Vikings can get shut down pretty handily here. Did he at least get the extended thermal lens upgrade? Yeah, he did. So that's nice. Robo Bay, yeah, it's still alive, so it makes sense. Unless he decided to cancel that, which would make very little sense. 15 SCVs decide to run for their lives. Only three probes remain right now. Um, I guess one of them is somewhere out on the map. That would be very critical. Gumiho actually with 1,061 minerals in the bank, which is a little bit much. Another Nexus building right now in the bottom left-hand corner. This is apparently the grand evacuation from Gumiho's base, though. He decides to get on out of there. Okay. Um, we're gonna trade bases, yeah. Apparently Terran is now flying at least some of their structures towards the other side of the map. A round of bunkers comes up here, too. Does he still have a command center? He should still have a com No, he doesn't actually have a command center anymore, but I guess he can, uh, he can make one if he wants to. Okay, we're gonna start picking up whatever we can. We don't mind over here in the mix. Does kill one of those units. Another, oh, bunch of damage here comes down. On all of those phoenixes. Nexus here on the left side of the map is gonna finish up. Gumiho has not rebuilt their bases and he's being revealed. This is painful. Very, very painful right here for Gumi. Now, he doesn't actually have money anymore. I guess he could salvage bunkers to get money back? Hmm. Salvaging bunny... Yeah, salvaging some bunkers here to get money back. It's kind of, it's kind of like a piggy bank, I guess, right? Getting all of these producing structures also massive. Creator, though, finds himself with a really good supply lead right now. Does he have enough to break through all of this, though? Okay, lasers are being shot at whatever they can be shot at. There is some money for repair, but only a very small amount. Love the fact that he decided to take his, his opponent's natural expansion, by the way. That's really cute. We have some mining going on here once again on the left side of the map, too. So Protal slowly starting to rebuild. <sighs> okay. The bunkers are taking a beating, man. Yeah, I, uh, I don't know exactly what the plan is here, uh, Gumiho. Don't get me wrong. I think your decision-making has been pretty solid, but I think we're just slowly bleeding out right now. I've been making fun of some of those Colossi, man, at least of their brothers, but the Colossi that are still available right now are putting in so much work. Okay, GG is called. It's Creator who obtains the victory 2-1.